Welcome back to another episode. In today's episode, I'm going to cover the WordPress admin dashboard and how to navigate around it. All right, so in order to get there, you need to go to your website. I am on my local host, so that's why you see localhost forward slash uh, WP test here, but this would be your domain name. So it would end in a .com or .org, .net, whatever it ends in. And then from there, you would append WP dash login dot php or you could do wp dash admin um, but this is the typical login url in order to get to the dashboard we would press enter and then you would put in your username or email and your password again i'm on my local host so the credentials are very easy to get in for convenience purposes but on your production site obviously this should be very strong so i'll put in my credentials here and then I'll log in. From there, this is your dashboard. Uh, this can look different depending on what plugins you have installed or what theme uh, features uh, may be added you know, to customize this dashboard area. But typically what you will see is an at a glance, it'll show you what you have, um, some activity, quick draft, some news, uh, you can move these widget things around to customize it for you. Up here, you will see there's a screen options. You can look at, at this section here. If this is your first time logging in, you will see this welcome um, widget over here. This says welcome to WordPress. And then it gives you some get started information, customize your site or change your theme completely. You know, edit your front page, add additional pages, blog posts, visit your site manage widgets and menus, turn comments on or off, learn more about getting started. I'm gonna dismiss that, and then you see it's no longer checked here. If you don't want any of these widgets here, you can just toggle them off if you want, or just leave whatever you want, toggle on. And then you also have this help um, section here where you can get an overview. There's a link to the documentation on the dashboard and support forms. You have the navigation. It gives you some uh, tips about the navigation, layout, and content. So take a look in that section if you have, uh, if you're curious to see what's there. All right. So this is again your dashboard. Now, if you want to check for updates, if you don't see a notification that there's updates available, but you want to check, you can just go right here to the updates link in the sidebar of your dashboard. It will then check to see if there's any updates available, whether it's the core files, the plugins, or themes. It's very important to keep your WordPress-powered website um, up to date, so that way you get all security enhancements and features that have been added or fine-tuned for the WordPress software. Uh, down here, you'll see uh, this link here is the post link, and then you have the submenus that pop out when you hover over it all posts, add new categories and tags. All right, so if you click on the all posts or if you just click on here, watch what happens. All right, so it'll bring you to the all posts that you have. So if you this is a brand new installation, you might not see any blog posts here or you just might see the default um, hello world uh, blog post. But if you have multiple blog posts, you'll see them here in the order um, of last published. So this is all the posts that you have. And then you get the features to edit, quick edit, put into the trash, or view it in the browser. You also get the author, categories, tags, when it was published, and if you have a featured image for it. You could also change the image, ed edit it, or if you want, you can remove the featured image. Uh, you also have some other options here, like bulk actions, edit, move to trash. You could apply them. You can sort them based on the dates, categories, shows you a list of your categories, and then you can filter them out. You can also use a search post here. If you have a lot of posts and you want to get to one quickly and you know the general keywords or tags or whatever for it, you could search for it here and it will take you there. If you have more than, I believe it's, you know, if you have more than uh, 20 posts on the first page, you'll get this option for the second page or third page or whatever, how many posts you have. 
and then you see that you can go to your earlier posts. All right, so that's that. Now adding a new post is very easy. Click on add new. And then it takes you to the add new post. This is where you put the title. This is where you'll put your content. Um, if you want to add media, you click on here. I have a couple of plugins that are very good. Um, this is the Envira Gallery. This is the Soliloquy Slider. And then you see some options here. If you're familiar with a uh, Word editor like Microsoft Word or something to that effect, this is very similar. You have your bold, italicized, um, unordered list, number list, quotation marks or block quotes, your justification, your links or remove links. This is if you want to insert more. It's like a teaser text, like an excerpt, uh, maybe one paragraph, and then you'll click on this. It'll place it inside your content area, and then the person will be able to click a link to see the full article. And then this toggles the lower subsection here, and then you get to strike through some use some words if you want to, horizontal line, this is the text color, you know, you paste that as text when you're pasting stuff there, you can clear the formatting if you want, special characters, click on that, and these are some of the characters you have, and then decrease indent or increase, then if you need to undo or, you know, redo. Then if you want to look at some more keyboard shortcuts, this is very helpful. Uh, this gives you some of the keyboard shortcuts uh, that you may want to Take a moment to remember, you know, I, I typically like working with the keyboard because it makes it faster and more efficient, um, but you do have to remember, you know, some of these keyboard shortcuts. It's definitely a handy sheet right here. So take a look at that. And then, you know, if you go further down, depending on what plugins you'll have installed, you'll have other sections here. Like if you have an SEO plugin or another meta box plugin, you might have some more features down here. Or if you have something like the Google Maps, uh, you might be able to have a short code section down here. Um, on this page, if you go back to screen options, you get some more inf more options here. So if you want to put in custom fields, you can do that. And then now you get this box down here. In another episode, I'll go more into what custom fields are because it should be its own episode. We're going to toggle that off. And then you can, you know, you want to put in the author, whoever the, if you have multiple authors, you know, that's a feature you can have there to assign a post to different authors, uh, things of that nature. So that's pretty much for this side. On the right hand side where it says publish, you have the save draft because, you know, sometimes you may not be able to finish a blog post in one sitting. You might have to come back to it for whatever reason. And you can save the draft um, right there. If you want to edit the status, if something's published and you want to take it down, you can edit the status and put it back into draft mode if you want. You can preview any changes and see how it would look in the browser. And then if you want to publish immediately or change this, you can do that as well. Uh, these are some of the categories I have. Yours will be different. Um, so definitely I recommend finding what categories would make sense for your type of website and creating those in the beginning. That way you can better organize your content. But these are some of the categories. You could always add a new category by clicking here. And then below that is the tags. Tags are another way to categorize your, uh, your website. Let's say I have over here social media, right? So that could be like a category of social media. Then I can have like a tags for like Facebook or for like Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Snapchat, etc. And you can add new tags here if you want, things of that nature. All right, down here is featured image. The theme that I'm using um, has the featured image uh, enabled. So I can set a featured image here uh, and it would be helpful for the theme to be able to use it in pages like the blog page where it has all the blog posts and stuff. So that's where you would put the image. Then obviously if you want to publish your article, you pub publish it there. You want to take a look at your categories, they're right there in the category link. It shows you your categories. To create a new category, you can create it right here, give it the name, and you can correspond it to this section here. Like I have the life category, SEO, social media. So you'll put it here capitalized. The slug would be lowercase, you can see it right here, would be lowercase is how the URL will look. 
And then if it's going to be a parent, um, you know, you would just check it off there. If you want to put a description, it's good to put a description. It's good for SEO purposes. Um, put a nice description here that would be beneficial uh, for that category. And then you just add the category and it'll be placed here. If you notice these numbers on the side, this tells you how many articles are associated with this particular category. So for websites, we have five articles. Uncategorized, we have one. See, this is, you would probably want to get rid of the uncategorized because it's not good for your organization of your website. Um, so you would want to delete this one and make sure you have everything categorized properly. And then when you add a new category, just click that button. Want to do bulk actions, you have that and apply. Next, we go into the tags, which is very similar in terms of the makeup for as categories. You could add a new tag here. The name would be uppercase. The slug would be lowercase. And if it's going to be more than one word, you would typically have, um, you know, a dash in the middle. And then you put your description. Then you can see the information right here. And then you see what, how many instances or articles are using these particular tags. All right, so now moving on down, you have your media section. This is for your images, and you would see the uh, media that you currently have uploaded to your website. And then if you want to add a new item, you can either click on the Add New Here or Add New Here, and then you can drop files anywhere to upload or select them from your computer. It'll tell you what the maximum upload size is for an image. Now, taking a look at an image, you will uh, typically have your URL for the image where it's located. You will have the title. It's important to put the title. You may want to put a caption. You should definitely put alt text. Again, this is on my local host, um, but on the production site, you want to have the alt text. This is important for search engines. Um, so you want that there. And if you want to put a description, you can do that as well. And then it tells you who it's uploaded by. You could view the attachment page, edit more details, click on that. It'll bring you here where you can edit some more information. You get some of these options over here as well. You could also see some of the dimensions here where the file size and the dimensions of the actual image is 250 wide, 150 height. So that's that. If you want to delete it or update it, you can do that there. All right. So. I'm using a plugin that sets automatic featured images, so I'm going to bypass this section. But when you add some plugins, uh, they may add this, like a link in the admin sidebar. Uh, but I'm going to bypass this one since it's not relevant to the typical WordPress installation. Now, pages are very similar to posts. Uh, posts are more for your blog post, right? So um, that's the chronological stuff, that's blogging. Uh, those are will show up in your feed. Now, pages are different. They're more static, uh, but the way you create them is very similar. So, you would, if you click on pages here, you can either view the current pages you have on your site. So, I have set up a home page for link purposes, a contact page, um, my blog page, which will be a feed of all my blog posts, and then the about page for my for this particular site and the services page. So this shows you, you know, what a static content will look like. This is stuff that, you know, typically wouldn't have a date or wouldn't be changing that often. Uh, there's more static type um, pages and stuff. If you want to add a new one, click on add new or add new there, and then you give it a title. And the same as with the post, you would just add the content here. You can add media. When you click on add media, it'll help you choose from what you currently have, or you can upload um, in this manner as well. And then you can format your content in here using some of these icon options here. I have th this one over here. It's a plugin I'm using because this is a demo um, demonstration site on my local local host. And this one just puts in some lorem ipsum. So that's why this is here. So I'm just going to put in some, you know, random text here for now. All right. So now see you place it there. You can format in that manner. You can do stuff like do that. 
you know, if I tile the size, if you want to change the color, click on here, you can change the color for that particular text. Um, if you want to do a strike through, as I showed you before, that's how it would look. And previewing it would be done in this manner. You click on preview, and then you see how it lo would look in the, um, once it goes live, that's for the page. And the same features are similar for the post. Um, so most of these features are uh, pretty basic and they will be the general features of your WordPress powered website. Some plugins can add sections here and I have some videos on those as well. Um, but for now, this is the standard way for pages and for posts. And then again, you see the save draft, edit, visibility, publish, preview, publish here, move to trash. Um, if you want to, my theme has multiple types of layouts. Um, so that's the template options and then featured image and stuff. So that is how pages are. I'm going to move this one to the trash or stay first. Let me wait to finish your saving and then move to trash. I'll just leave it. All right. Now, if you have comments on your website, they would be found here. You would have pending, approved, spam, and trash. So you would see your comments here. You can um, often make sure that you moderate your, your comments. And if anyone comments, they will be displayed here. And you can see them in a pending section. And you could approve it, disapprove it, put into a trash or a spam folder. Any approved ones will be shown here and then subsequent these sections here. And then it will show the author, the comment itself, a little snippet of it if it's very long in response to the article and submit it on, that'll be the date. Now in the appearance section, if you hover over it, you'll see you have a couple of more links. So you have the themes, customize, widgets, menus, header, background, and this is something custom to my theme, and then the editor. All right, so we'll click on it here and it'll just show you some sub menus. So these are the themes currently here. Um, this is for the customizer. And this is how you can really play around with your theme. Um, I'm using my custom built theme that I sell on pixelmob.com. So some of these are uh, the features that it has. It has a slider built in. You know, you can really customize what's displayed on the front page. And if you want to change the colors, you know, there's some color options, things of that nature. Um, and then if you want to reset it, you can just click reset in that manner. But I'll give a better tutorial uh, based on the customizer because that's also um, should have its own tutorial and how to use it. But this is just a basic one through. You'll depend on the theme you're using or maybe even some plugins. You have some additional features here in this section and you can hide it or display it. And then we'll go back. Brings us back to where we were before. The next sub menu is the widgets. And in the widgets section, this shows you the available widgets you have for use within your website. And then these are the widget areas where you can place those widgets. So you would just drag either drag and drop into a particular location, or you can just click on it and then choose from the drop down here and then you can just click on add widget and then in the widget section you, this I'm using the monster widget here this is for demo purposes but you can let's say I'm going to put a text widget there you have a title and then you can place your content here if you want to automatically add paragraph tags you could do that there as well I'm just going to delete that and then if you have any inactive widgets from maybe changing themes or temporarily enact, um, making them inactive, you would find them down here. And then if you want to reactivate them or delete them, you would be able to do that there. Um, some plugins will give you additional widget features uh, that you can add. Like I'm using Soliloquy on this theme. And then you can just drag it into, see it's already over here. I'm using Soliloquy on the front page. Um, in the full width area. Then you give it a title, you can choose your slider, things of that nature. On my theme, I have this feature for customizing some additional content on the front end. So that's just for that. All right, moving on. This is the menu section. 
with the menus, um, you depending on the theme you're using or plugins, you will have your menu options and you would have your menu locations. So here's you how you would customize it, you know, for your purposes. So for my theme, I have two menus, main and social. And then in the main one, this is where I put my um, static links and then any sub menus and then the location where they'll be displayed, primary menu. Any changes you make, you just click on save menu. Now for my social menu, this is where I would put my social media links and I would put them to as custom links here. And then you would just put the uh, URL and the name. And then you make sure it's social menu or whatever the theme says there and save menu. So you can always put pages in a menu. You can put posts in a menu if you want. You don't see that often, but sometimes you might want to, you know, have a menu item with your most popular or most important post that you want to display. So you can do that there. And then custom links, as I mentioned before, you would just put any URL here to a custom um, link and then the text there. Categories. This is a great way also. Some people like to make their main menu uh, be a list of categories. So that way people can, you know, view articles based on that particular category if they choose. So that's pretty popular. And always, if you want to take a look, check out the screen options because it might give you some additional um, options here. Like one of them is the link target. If you're putting in some links to external sources that you want to open up in a new tag, a new tab on your browser, click on that. And then when you hover over, now you get this option here, open link in a new tab. If you remove that, that goes away. Did you see that? Right there. Any changes, just make sure you save it and then it'll save the menu and you're good to go. Now for the header, this is if you're going to use a custom header, it'll bring you back to the customizer. And that's very dependent on your themes. Custom backgrounds as well is for that. I'm going to bypass this because you might not have this if you're not using my theme. Um, the editor for the appearance, and you also find it in the plugin section, is where you get to the actual files for your theme or plugins. You won't see um, your core files here, but you will see your theme files and your plugin files, um, depending on which section you're in. In the appearance, you'll see your theme files. Um, you can look at the code here. You could see some of the PHP files that is being used. Now, I don't recommend editing any of these in the browser because if you get the syntax wrong, that can cause you issues in terms of uh, viewability that can make it difficult for you to recover from. Um, sometimes with the PHP files, you can get a white screen of death where uh, because the syntax is, can be wrong, um, now you'll have to actually go into your uh, real text editor and upload a backup copy of that same file that you just adjusted. So if you're not familiar with how to do that, I would leave this off. And actually, I normally turn this feature off on live websites for security purposes, because if somebody does get into your um, dashboard, then they can edit some code here and put in some malicious code that you may not realize until it's too late. So I typically disable this. In another video, I'll show you how to do that. Now for pl plugins, this is the plugins link here. These are the plugins I currently have on this um, demo site. And if you want to add a new one, you can just click on there, add new. And you could choose from these are the featured ones. You could choose the popular ones and then recommended. And then if you know the um, handle of someone that's already um, on WordPress.org, you can, or if you're, you have a uh, username on WordPress.org, you put that username here and you can get a list of all their favorites. If you want to upload a plugin, you can choose that, upload, choose a file, and you upload a zip format of that plugin and it'll go into your system and then you would activate it. And then again, the editor here, you can see some of the files for various 
plugins that you have on your on your website moving on to users this is the users link and this will give you a list of all your users on your wordpress power website It'll give you the username the display name the email address their role and how many posts are associated with them right now i only have one user here for administrator you will click you could also have an editor um a uh, author uh contributor and a subscriber subscriber being the lowest in terms of um in terms of what in terms of capabilities and what they can do on your site and then there's the contributor where they can contribute but they cannot publish content onto your site you would need a, an editor or an administrator to be able to do that then there's an author that can publish um, their own content on your site and you would give them that permission and then there's an editor that can obviously publish and edit content from other people and then the administrator is the ultimate role this is where you get full functionality full control over your website um, the only time that uh, this is not the ultimate is in a wordpress multi-site that's a more advanced feature and then you would have a super admin um, user role there as well if you want to edit your user or any other users this is what you would find here you can change the visual editor uh, you can change the color format keyboard shortcuts if you want to enable those toolbar username first name last name some of this information here you would just fill this out and then if you want to add a new user you can do that here as well you can add a new user there the default role for new users should be subscriber um, that is the more secure uh, role to give someone that's just going to be a member of your site just you know just uh, viewing your content and stuff like that is the safest role to give them now if we go down to tools this will show you your available tools on your website and this can change depending on again themes plugins things of that nature but this you may not use this that often but just take a look at here if you want if you want to import from another um, system by default you could import from blogger blog role you can do categories and tags converter live journal movable type and type pad RSS tumblr and even another WordPress um, website you can import post pages comments custom fields categories tags from an export file if you want to export you can do this do that as well you can export all your content or you could choose just to export some particular content and you would download that file it will create an XML file for you to save on your computer now we'll move on to the settings area this is the site title for your website the tagline and then the address um, for your WordPress address that'll be your domain and the site URL the email address uh, if you want to let people register you can membership anyone can register you can check that off and then you use a default role subscriber you can set your time zone your date format your time format and what day of the week your um, your week starts on for you some people like to start the week on Sunday some on Monday then you can use your uh, set your default language here and then for writing purposes this is if you want to have a default category you can set that here in that manner default post format and this depends on your theme again if it if it uh, supports these type of formats you can set that there and then if you're using a mail server you can put those credentials in here make any changes just make sure you click on save changes now for reading this is for people who are uh, viewing your content you can set your po your website to show your latest post on the home page or a static page for the home page or front page here and then for the post page it, you would set up uh, another page like a blog page and you would choose that here then you can decide blog page just to show at most 10 and then if you want to do syndication as well and then either full text or summary here I have this search engine visibility set to discourage um, checked mark, checked because 
this is my local host. On your production site, you want to make sure this is unchecked. Uh, that's very important for a live website. Now, for discussion purposes, you can attempt to notify any blogs linked to from the article, allowing notification from other blogs, pingbacks and trackbacks on your articles. And then you can set some of the options here that uh, suit your needs. Um, if you want to allow people to comment, um, you typically want to have the comment author must fill out name and email. And then I typically like to make sure that commenters are logged in. Um, that's, you know, for me, that's important. Then if you want to close off comments after a certain amount of time, this is great for to prevent spam commenters because often a person will try um, to comment on older articles, especially if you have, the, have it that people can just comment without logging in or filling out any information. So you may want to shut this down after a certain amount of time. Then you can enable threaded nested comments. You know, you choose the, how far deep you want it to go. Then if you want to break comments into pages, you can do that here. And then this is notifications for you. Email me whenever anyone posts a comment. A comment is helpful moderation. And then if you want to set some rules here, you can do that as well. And then these are, when a comment contains any of these words, in its content, name, URL, email, or IP, it will be held in a mod moderation queue. So this is for if you want to filter the type of comments. Um, and make sure that stuff is not inappropriate. And you can do that here. You can put a comment separator list, and then um, your system will ensure that those aren't published automatically. It'll be held for moderation, even if the person's allowed to post comments. And then these are comment blacklists. And then avatars. If you want to you know, set a default avatar, you can do that here as well. If you make any changes, click on Save Changes. Then Media. This is the next link. This is for your thumbnail sizes, your medium and large sizes. You can set these here. Um, and then if you want to have a crop thumbnail to exact dimensions, that's always you know, a good thing to do. So you can set these to suit your needs. And then Save Changes. I like to organize my uploads into month and year base folders just for organization purposes. But you can uncheck this if you want. Permalinks is also another important section. Um, by default, your website might be set to plain. These are called ugly permalinks or URLs where it's not search engine friendly. Um, you can change this. You can put day and name. You, know, you can do month and name, numeric. I like using the post name. It's cleaner. It's simple. Um, it's typical for what you would want for the average website the post name. If you want to have a custom structure, you can set that up over here as well. So any changes, just save the changes. All right, so now if you want to minimize your admin sidebar, you can do that here. And then you see you get these icons in place of them. And if you hover over it, you'll see the pop-outs or fly-outs. And then bring it back out in that manner. And if you have any help, you'll, you'll often see the help icon there. And if you want to log out, you can do that from here. If you want to edit your profile. And then if you want to get to the front of your site, you could just hover over where the home button is here, followed by your site name. Click on visit site. And then this is, you would see the front end of your website. And then looking at the toolbar up here, um, you can customize it. This will take you straight to the customizer. This will show you all the comments. If you want to add a new post, media, page, um, in this case I have the gallery there, or user. Or if you want to edit a page, you can do that as well. You want to go back to the admin dashboard, hover over your site title again, your site name, and then you can go to dashboard, you can go directly to themes, you can go directly to widgets or menus, or any other options that might be here. If you want to go to learn more about WordPress, you can just hover over the WordPress icon here, and you'll see some more links there as well. So this pretty much shows you the back end of your WordPress admin dashboard, some of the features that exist there, and how to navigate around it. Again, a lot of this stuff is dependent on the theme that you're using and the any plugins that might add some additional features uh, to the dashboard. Um, there's a lot of them. Like Soliloquy adds, you know, uh, some another link here and then some sub 
menu links. In Veer, it does the same thing. And um, my featured images one plugin here does the same thing as well. But just spend some time in the back end and you will see any any features that exist for your particular theme. If you want to go to the plugins and uninstall a plugin, that's very easy to do. Um, you would just click on uh, the plugin you want to choose. You can either activate or deactivate it, and then you can delete it if you choose. That's pretty much it. The This is the rundown of the WordPress admin dashboard. Uh, hopefully you found this episode helpful. If you did, give us a thumbs up. And if you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. And don't forget to subscribe because we'll be go creating some more videos on how to manage your WordPress powered website. Again, don't forget to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Yeah.